president of the Michigan Women's Golf Association. It is my honor to be the MC for this auspicious occasion to honor these extraordinary nine individuals. Election to the Michigan Women's Golf Association's Hall of Fame is a unique honor bestowed upon those individuals who have demonstrated outstanding achievement, leadership, professionalism, good character, and the highest standards of conduct associated with the extraordinary game of golf. These individuals contributed greatly to the tradition, the strength, and ongoing success of golf in the state of Michigan. A special thanks to Pat Myers, whose vision and financial support during our 30th anniversary. Somebody asked me, how old is your organization? This is year 31. So it's good. It was Pat Myers' vision and financial support last year that led to the creation of this Hall of Fame. Pat, would you please come forward? Yeah. We would like to present you with this lovely memento for all that you've done for the organization and continue to do. Well, thank you very much.
Shelton has been on the MWGA board for 22 years, serving in various areas, specializing in communications, publicity, and promotion. Pat took the news links from his annual mimeographed version to the outstanding publication that we have today. Congratulations, Pat. I've known Nancy Sarah for over 20 years. Nancy has been a major factor in the success of MGA for 23 years, including serving as president for four years. Major accomplishments during Nancy's administration include implementation of the severe weather policy and introduction of our very popular weekday cha-cha-cha event. Thank you, Nancy. Congratulations to all of the 2017 inductees into the MWGA Hall of Fame. We're here with Jack Berry, who's being inducted, one of the only men today being inducted into the Michigan Women's Golf Hall of Fame. And I think we know why Jack is here, because he's been a journalist forever, written about golf forever, and we're so happy to have him here. So, Jack, tell us, why are you so excited to be the only man on this team today? <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you, Phyllis, I am accustomed to being outnumbered. <laughs> I have... Uh, my mother was uh, the oldest of five girls. Uh, I have, uh, I had three sisters. I have four daughters. I have three granddaughters. Yeah. So I'm accustomed to it. <laughs> so, uh, I guess you got some good training at a very early age, right? That's absolutely right. <laughs> So, Jack, you know, um, we had a couple interviews with you, and, and like I said, I, I learned that you're very influential when it comes to covering uh, women's golf. And tell us a little bit, like, why did, why did you feel that the newspapers back then were interested in having you cover women's golf events? Well, they understood that, uh, you know, that there is the other sex. And uh, it was just that... Uh, there wasn't as if the uh, women's groups didn't push as much as, as they have done now. And it has changed so much from when I started at the Free Press 1959 to what it is now is uh, awesome. I mean, what's going on in women's golf all over the world? The women's open, they they have uh, girls from 25 different countries. Uh, it's uh, just incredible how it's, and Title IX has a huge, huge uh, part of the success of uh, women's golf. It's been 45 years since Richard Nixon signed into law Title IX that wow. uh, opened. Uh, if you got federal money, you had to have equal opportunity for uh, for men and women, and that wound up with uh, being uh, uh, the start of really good women's high school golf college golf and uh, now into the uh, into the whole globalization of, of, of golf we are sitting here with Mary Cunningham who's being inducted today into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame Mary can you tell us how do you feel about this being inducted into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame well, I'll tell you what, it was quite a shock to me because I didn't really uh, think I really did that much, you know, because I enjoyed uh, everything, you know, when it came to golf, I enjoyed it. But Sarah, she, uh, I've known her quite a long time, and she wanted me to be in the Hall of Fame. She's, I think you deserve it, and so she put my name in, and so I want to thank her for that. And Mary, can you tell us, like, one specific maybe moment that you had on the course or tournament that you played in that's kind of memorable to you? It, okay, I will tell you this one story, which I, I think is sort of cute. This girlfriend of mine, um, uh, I was playing at this golf course. I can't remember the golf course now. And it was a part three. So she had her ball on the green, you know. Uh, and that. so you know what I did? I hit her ball, and it went in the hole. So she got a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are with Joan Garrity, who we all know because she's been in the golf 
in Michigan. Her name is well known, and she is one of the inductees here today. So, Joan, can you tell us how do you feel about being inducted into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame? Well, this is this is pretty special. I mean, the the Michigan Women's Golf Association has been, um, I think it's 31 years, something like that. And they've been um, such an important part of women's golf here in Michigan, providing opportunities to compete, opportunities to play, um, wonderful women that are involved. Um, the leadership are very special, uh, some of which are getting inducted tonight as well, which is pretty exciting. Um, so to be a part of this organization, um, it's been fun ever since I've started. Uh, I've very much appreciated the fact that they have a championship every year. Um, it's a special organization, and to be recognized, um, well, it's very special. I'm, I'm very appreciative. And we are here with the Michigan Hall of Fame inductees, one of which is Janina Jacobs. We congratulate you today, Janina, on being here and being inducted. Thank you so much, Phyllis. It's, it's such an honor, I can't even begin to tell you. Uh, and yet, you're right, this place is a very picturesque and scenic spot to have this. I've always liked Eagle Crest out here at EMU. So I used to play some golf out here with Bruce Cunningham, and I don't know if he's still the pro or the, the golf coach, but uh, we had some good times out here. Well, Janina, you have been playing since you were seven, right? That's correct. I was, a, I was a product of the Detroit Free Press Junior Golf School. I get all of the Detroit City golf courses. My dad taught my three brothers and me how to play and uh, something so significant is the fact uh, back in the 60s girls really didn't play golf that much and so thank god my dad didn't believe that that he was going to teach me to play just as much as he was going to teach my brothers to play so i was the beneficiary of that so thank you dad for being so enlightened but and it's ironic too that that one of our honorees today is my good friend Jack Berry, who I knew back when I was seven years old. He did mention you, and, and yes, yes, because yes, he came to our house one day to do a story on on my family, as kind of like a golfing family of the '60s and '70s. So I knew Jack when I was just a little pea jip, and uh, so it's it's just wonderful to be inducted along with him, and 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 that's a great thing that the, um, the Hall of Fame here has decided to honor men as well as women, because I've always been a fan of that. We are here with Cynthia Pinkard, who was inducted today into the MWGA Golf Hall of Fame. So Cynthia, how does it feel to be inducted into this organization? Well, I'm thrilled. I mean, it's a, a great organization. I've been a member since 1988, when I first started playing golf. Um, it's an organization that's very important to me. I think it does a lot of meaningful things. It's made a lot of difference to women in the sport, and that's why I remain engaged. Uh, it's very special. It's an honor. So tell us, um, Cynthia, how the organization that you're involved in, and how does that help women in golf? Or women, I guess, to play golf, encourage them to play? Well, uh, when the organization first started, we were looking at, at women who just didn't have an opportunity to compete at the higher levels. And um, the MWGA gave them an opportunity to play and compete nationally. Uh, as the years have gone on, uh, opportunities have grown for women. But now a lot, of the, a lot of other players, whether they're high handicap or low handicap, they're still looking for opportunities to get together with other women and play the game and compete. And I think that's the one thing MWGA does. We, we try to be fair and honest and, and do the right things and give, make every woman that plays with us feel that they're important and what they do and how they score is important and that the friendships they make uh, and the connections they make within the organization is important. We are here in celebration of the Michigan Women's Golf Hall of Fame inductees tonight um, at their dinner. And here with us is Betty Pritchard, one of the inductees. Betty, so tell us, how do you feel about being inducted into the Michigan Women's Golf Hall of Fame? Well, I'm very excited. I absolutely did not expect it, and I 
I feel certain that my age must have had something to do with my having been selected because I won't be here that much longer and I'll open up a spot for someone else. <laughs> well, Mary, now I understand, or Betty, I'm sorry, I understand that you've been playing golf since you were seven? That's right. That's a lot of years. So tell us why golf. Well, I grew up on a golf course. With, there were five children, and we were known as the Golfing Goldthorpes. We all played golf, and uh, dur we the Depression hit during this time that we lived on the golf course, and so all of us children know and learned what it took to run a golf course. We had a golf professional, and he uh, taught us all to play the game as it should be played and taught us the rules, so of course I always was a stickler for the rules. And in that uh, vein, I have been very interested throughout my golf. Betty. So I, I understand also that one of your requirements uh, was that before, when you got married, the person that you married had to play golf. So how did that work out for you? Oh, that just worked out. So it was planned because <laughs> the war brought this Navy officer to play this course, which my father had built. And uh, he was stationed in Philadelphia Navy Base, and, and a member from the Jersey Club brought him over to play this course. And my little sister was three years younger, saw this blonde get out of the car, and she said, mm, I'm going to watch him. So she watched him, and so when he came in off the 18th hole, she ran up and said, what did you shoot? And he said, 69. And she said, you did? oh, why don't you come out tonight and play ping pong and darts at our house? We have fun every night. <laughs> As a result, he did come out, and he became a good family friend. And so at the end, he was the man that I married. And you've been married or were married for how long? Well, we were married 50 years, and then Bill died. And so it's been 23 years I've lived alone. But, of wow. course, it. I was very prepared because I was not interested in any, th any other person, of course. Right. Well, Betty, we really enjoyed being with you today, and congratulations on your induction. And women, just keep in mind, if you're looking for a husband, you might find one on the golf course, you right, Betty? definitely might, particularly if you can putt. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here today with Pat Shelton, who is one of the nine inductees today in the Michigan Women's Golf Hall of Fame. So Pat, tell us, how does it feel to be inducted into the Michigan Women's Golf Hall of Fame? It's really fantastic. It's quite an honor. I'm so grateful to have been named as an inductee, especially you know this year, the, kind of like the first year, the initial year. So it's marvelous. So, Pat, we know you've been involved in women's golf um, for probably 30-plus years, right? Yeah. Um, so, and we know you're, you're involved with the Michigan Women's Golf Association, and you also do, like, the PR for them, correct? Correct. Yes, I do. Um, uh, issue the news releases, um, promotions and publicity. So uh, prior to that, I did the newsletter. I do a lot of the uh, printed publications. You commented you had that program over there. I created that, put that together, the, the, um, the program for today's event. So yeah, communications. So why, Pat, did you, did you choose golf, the game of golf? <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> Many, many years ago, I was married, and my husband would have a threesome, and he wanted somebody to fill the, to, to fill the foursome, and so he dragged me along, and eventually I said, hey, this isn't working. I have to take some lessons. And from there, you know, I enjoyed the game. Um, I loved being outdoors, uh, made some marvelous friends, so... I got a little scary there, Pat, when you said he wanted a threesome. I was like, wait a minute, we're talking no, about golf. Not golf. <laughs> this is true. It was golf. <laughs> and we are here with Nancy Sarah, who's one of the uh, fortunate inductees into the MWA, MWGA Golf Hall of Fame. So, Nancy, tell us, how does it feel to be inducted into the inaugural event here? I am so honored. It feels unreal. Like I think back and somebody said, well, yeah, you've been on the board for 24 years. Next year will be 25. And I'm going, 
No way, I'm not that old, am I? <laughs> Besides which, I've been a member for longer than that. I'm going, wait a minute, I'm not that old, am I? <laughs> so they're going, you must be. I guess they're right. Some of the, some of the other inductees, Nancy, um, told us that they would not um, consider even dating or marrying a guy that played that didn't play golf. So how do you feel about that? Um, my husband plays golf, but we hardly ever play together. He works at a golf course. He gets free golf. I don't. I hope they're listening. I don't know why. But um, it, no, golf is an individual sport. And you either love it or you don't love it. But if you do it, you'll love it. We are here with Sarah Wald, who is president of the Michigan Women's Golf Association and soon to be president of the Golf Association of Michigan next year, right? Yes, I'm excited about that. It's a great organization, has a great staff, and a lot of wonderful volunteers. So it's quite an honor to be president of the Golf Association of Michigan. Well, you know, we see, Sarah, I was admiring earlier all your hardware here you have on, you have, you're, like I said, you have the Golf Association of Michigan, and tell us about the other things you're involved in. This is the USGA, and also the Women's Michigan Golf, uh, Women's, sorry, Women's Michigan Golf Association medal as well. I was the last president that of uh, the group that ran the uh, Michigan Women's Amateur before the Golf Association of Michigan took it over. Wow. Well, she is here, Sarah's here today to tell us about an event that will be played here in October, Sarah? Yes, October 6th to the 8th. It's the first annual Shirley Spork Invitational. And Eastern Michigan is inviting 12 collegiate teams to an Invitational. It's the first one, and Shirley is very excited about being honored having this event in her name. And it's going to be a very nice event, and Eastern Michigan is putting out a lot of effort to uh, get the teams here and to have a very special event in Shirley's honor. Shirley, one of the questions I wanted to ask you about is, as a co-founder of the teaching division and then having gone to school at Michigan State Normal College, which was a teaching college, was there a direct connection between your time at Eastern and then what you ended up doing with the LPGA? Well, definitely so, because Gaining a teaching credential and being able to teach methodology and how to teach the game, I was able to bring that forward into trying to establish the teaching division for the LPGA. So my education, my degree allowed me and my background allowed me to blow my horn and keep blowing my horn and having them consider starting a teaching division and it took four years in the executive board and it passed by one one vote when Marilyn Smith was president by one vote we it passed after four years of my pounding it and we started the LPGA teaching division in 1959.